What's up guys? Welcome back to Fancy Goldfish Fanatics. Today we're going to be speaking all about auto feeders, so make sure you stay tuned to find out more. Hey Fanatics family, welcome back. As always, check out all of those links in the description. Make sure you check out our website. And if you're from America, make sure to check out Jimmy Goldfish USA and use code JimmyGF at the checkout to get 10% off your order. Today, we're gonna to be speaking all about auto feeders. I've actually just come back from holiday, hopefully looking a little bit more tan than usual. And I wanted to explain a little bit more about auto feeders. And maybe I'll also do a video on how to prepare your goldfish and how to prepare your fish and aquariums for when you are going on holiday and what steps you should do Maybe there are a few misconceptions out there in the fish world that need to be rectified as well. But today's video, we're gonna be talking all about the auto feeder. There are so many different types you may have seen this one, or this one, or this one. There are so many different types out there in the fish keeping world. Today, I've got this Eheim auto feeder. I just wanna to talk to you a little bit about it. All auto feeders are pretty similar, but I wanted to talk to you guys about how to prepare your auto feeder and prepare your fish for your holiday or for your vacation. So first up, pretty simple, we've got the main auto feeder unit. This one doesn't currently have any batteries in it because we don't need that for the purposes of the video. You've generally got a feed button and then a few other buttons to program it. Then also you have your food hopper here where you can adjust the amount of food that comes out and then you can adjust the amount of spins that this does to rotate that food and push it into the water of your aquarium. So when you're setting up your auto feeder, a lot of people will not recommend using an auto feeder when you go on a holiday in case it malfunctions. And there are some horror stories where a full feed hopper has been dumped into the aquarium, the fish have had a huge ammonia problem, and then that has caused some or even a lot of deaths within the tank. So you need to be really careful when setting up an auto feeder. Generally, if you're feeding your fish, maybe three, four, five times a day. You don't want to be increasing that load, you want to be decreasing that load when you go on holiday. Generally, your fish will do absolutely fine with no food at all for up to a week, really. Even in some cases, they'll be fine for two weeks with no food at all. And generally, a lot of keepers who feed or overfeed or let someone else feed their fish, generally come back to fish that are potentially unwell, maybe some deaths as well. So we really wanna be super careful when we're setting up our auto feeders and when we're choosing what we're gonna do when we go on a holiday. A few things that I like to do is reduce the feed. So generally, I'm feeding those Ryukin over there around four to five times a day. However, if I'm on holiday, I'm gonna be only feeding them twice, one in the morning and one in the evening, maybe around 10 o'clock and four o'clock, once the lights are on the main tank. Also, what I will do, I will measure out the approximate amount that those fish are gonna eat over that one week period, two week period, however long you're going away for. So if I'm going away for a week, I'd probably put maybe a couple of bottle caps worth of food in here. In the event there is a disaster, the feeder malfunctions and dumps all of that food into the tank, it's only gonna be a couple of bottle caps, maybe even less if the feeder has been feeding for the first couple of days. And that is not gonna cause nearly as much of a problem unless this thing was completely full. So that is one way to mitigate the negative impacts a potential auto feeder could have on your fish putting the exact amount or roughly the amount of food that you believe they will eat over that week period or that two week period for instance. You can also actually reduce it even further. You can even put enough for maybe the first three or four days and then you can feed them on your return as well. So make sure there is not too much food in the feeder and if there is any malfunctions or any problems, it's not gonna dump huge amounts of food into your tank. So generally I would always feed probably half to 60% of the food and food rates that you normally feed. Give your fish a nice good feed before you go away and then make sure this is running perfectly as well. Generally, if I'm going away, I'm gonna have this auto feeder set up for maybe a week prior to my holiday or prior to my vacation. So make sure it's working. Make sure you put in fresh batteries so you know there's not gonna be any problems while you go away. And make sure it is out of reach from the fish. 
somewhere where they're not going to be able to splash, knock any water in, potentially clog the feeder, potentially cause bacteria and mold and fungi to start developing on the food especially if it's quite warm it's summer and the room temperature is quite humid and warm we don't want any problems with our food that is potentially going to be eaten by our fish so we want to make sure we have full batteries we want to make sure the level is set at the correct level for our fish and generally putting it on a week before allows us to know that auto feed it is functioning and working correctly before we go on vacation so we can have a nice bit of peace of mind other auto feeders also include those food blocks you may see if i put a picture of one right here you may see that as well that may be quite familiar to you and you may recognize that those white food blocks are really really bad for your fish they heavily dissolve plenty of organic waste into your tank and flood your tank with nutrients potentially causing a rapid crash or drop in o2 maybe causing the water to become more acidic releasing lots of ammonia and nitrite into the tank water and potentially causing havoc in your tank while you are away and not able to clean it up so i would generally not use these auto feeders there are some like the tetra weekend food which do all right for two to three days and potentially you could use one of those but i would say if you're going on holiday for four days or less I wouldn't use an auto feeder at all and you're likely going to have many more problems using an auto feeder or getting someone to feed your fish while you're away. If you're away longer than four days, generally personally, I will put an auto feeder on my tank or get someone to feed the fish two, three times a week, something like that. Now, a lot of people will tell you that your fish will be fine for two weeks with no food. I said that at the beginning of the video. However, if you're used to feeding your fish continuously throughout the day, lots of feeds, you don't really want to just suddenly pop them off the food and go two weeks with nothing. It may cause some problems. It may cause the immune system to weaken slightly. They haven't got too much energy. Maybe they might be a little bit lethargic. And that is when some other problems can start to occur. So I would say if you're going away for more than four days, get one of these feeders, put a little bit of food in, maybe a bottle cap, maybe a couple of bottle caps, just to get those fish ticking over and just so they've got enough nutrients, enough energy to keep processing and functioning in the aquarium. I'm gonna mention some other things in another video like cleaning your aquarium, what you, what you should do to prepare your fish for vacation or holiday, but that will be, as I said, in another video. And today we're mainly just focusing on these auto feeders and how to set them up correctly. Generally, as I mentioned, two feeds a day is absolutely fine as well for your fish. Don't overfeed them, maybe give them a slightly reduced portion, just as I said, so they have enough energy. And just so they've got enough energy and a strong immune system whilst you're away to keep them going. So I hope you've enjoyed that video. I hope it's been informative and helpful. Maybe it's changed some of your ideas about auto feeders and maybe you felt slightly differently about them. As I said, there's so many on the market. This is just an Eheim one, just as, as an example. The dual ones are quite good as well. I think the JBL ones are quite good. There are so many to pick from. If you've got any questions, as always, leave a comment down below. If you want to have your tank featured on the tank tours or the Rate My Tank, episode series then make sure to let me know down below or send me an email the link is in the description fancygoldfishfanatics at gmail.com as always thank you all for watching remember to keep those water changes up and happy fish keeping